How do we talk to and with each other? How do we maybe do less telling? Because communication isn't just about sharing information. It's a two-way street. How do we ask more questions? Welcome to Connect Live at Adventist Health. I'm Joyce Newmeyer, the Chief Culture Officer at Adventist Health and your host for Connect Live. This week, we're talking about health, wholeness, and hope. I'm excited to introduce you to our Leadership and Finance Residents Class of 2021. Then I'll be joined by John Beeman and Shelley Trumbo to talk about our Associate Wellbeing Initiative. And last, I'll tell you about an amazing story of healing and hope in the Mendocino Network. Now to introduce you to an amazing group of people. Last year, we launched our first cohort of leadership and finance residents, and they have just entered their second year in five different Adventist health organizations. New residents have just begun their experience this year. Uh, we've been recruiting from across the United States and we're building a new talent stream of future leaders for Adventist Health. So you're looking at the future of Adventist Health here. Residents are placed at Adventist Health in Portland, St. Helena, Sonora, Kern County, Central Valley Network, Glendale, Simi Valley, and Roseville. Our appreciation goes out to Tim Olari, the director of the program and an energetic, enthusiastic, and fearless leader for these residents. I'm very happy to welcome our guest today, Chief People and Business Officer, John Beeman, Wellbeing Executive, Shelley Trumbo. Welcome to both of you, friends, and thank you for joining me today to talk about well-being. Thank you, Joyce. Thanks, Joyce. John and Shelley, this is like a reunion for us, right? Uh, many of our viewers have seen the TikTok-inspired video series that can be found on the Story website. I'll remind you what that is, www.adventisthealth.org forward slash story. Uh, so the three of us went way out of our comfort zones to play those characters, right? Um, well, okay, yep. John and I were out of our comfort zone. Shelly, you were born to be an actress in the tradition of Lucille Ball, right? <laughs> Well, I know. I, I feel like we should. I should apologize to both of you for um, for my acting, but uh, hopefully the people that watched them uh, got the point and appreciated uh, Shelley and Joyce. You were great, John. I have to say, <laughs> as a child, there was a season where if somebody asked what I wanted to be when I grew up, I said Carol Burnett. And so it's really cool that this job lets me have just a little taste of that. <laughs> Well, it was so much fun to spend that time with you guys doing those videos. Um, who knew that the three of us would be skydiving together, right? <laughs> and exactly. diffusing bombs and everything else. People um, would so love to see the skydiving where they were blowing the leaf blower like six inches from our face, a leaf blower that had been recently used to blow leaves and grass. So that was that was fun. Well, and what's really amazing, we did all that in like two days. So, yes. I mean, we saved the world multiple times, all within a matter of hours. It's pretty impressive, really. Yeah, I, I was pretty impressed with this. Uh, I hope the people who haven't seen the videos will go to the story website and watch them because they really are a lot of fun. Uh, so, John, you've talked before about how the people part of your job is your most favorite, the most inspiring? What message do you hope our associates receive as a result of what all we're doing with these well being initiatives? What do you want them to know? Well, if you start with our mission statement, it's all about love. And the reason the people part of my job inspires me is I get to see real people loving other real people every day. And honestly, it, it humbles me it gives me a pause when i see how you care for each other and and it calls me to do whatever i can what we all can to help care for you and and so when we bought blue zones and it brought these globally researched you know worldwide uh, best practices around well-being it's like well why can't we start with our own people and and that partnership with well-being is Something that I, I mean, and Shelly knows, I mean, I, I actually ask to say, hey, what can, what, how can I be involved with these great ideas? Because I see, you know, Shelly and the whole team bringing wonderful thoughts that we're really giving to us as associates to care for us 
so that we can be well and so that we can continue to care for others. Thanks, John. Shelly, you're such a natural in front of the camera. We just talked about that, but it's also that your passion comes through loud and clear. Um, I know that you're very passionate about the well-being initiatives for our associates, and yet COVID's interrupted this, right? Um, people are busy saving lives. So how is the associate well-being rollout going? You know, Joyce, you're right. You know, we are so excited to bring the campus certifications to our communities, and we have adjusted the timeline. We want to be sensitive and thoughtful of what makes sense. But at the same time, we've also been intentional providing tools and resources that support well-being during this time. Um, it's a challenging season, and it's not a time to, to take the foot off the gas, if you will, in well-being resources. So whether it's our new wellness platform with ShareCare, you know, an easy way to check in on your physical health with your at-home biometric screenings, uh, an opportunity for emotional support with Sync Talk, or providing really resilience training for teams. We want to be there and do that. Um, we didn't plan on being a resilience resource in this way, but we're ready for it and we're stepping up. We want people to know that we're here for them. We're deeply grateful for how they're stepping up every single day in a million different ways. And, and we're excited about the first wave of campuses that are launching um, the Blue Zones certification. And that is coming just at, a, at, a, at an adjusted timeline. Thanks, Shelly. It is a time to practice radical self-care while people are caring for others, right? So, John, what is one thing that you wish associates knew about your personal commitment to their well-being and their resilience? Um, I know people think of you as a business guy, but uh, those of us who know you well know that you're really a people guy. And uh, what's something that maybe you think about a lot and they may not know that you do? John, we have you on mute. There you go. Well, I'm back. Um, you know, one thing that that's often on my mind is it's a choice for all of us um, to participate, to to do the activities that lead to better well-being. It's something I have to intentionally think about every day about myself. And, and so one thing that I want everybody to know is I understand that sometimes in great intent, we have a bunch, we have a lot of solutions that can help us. And, and I would love feedback and dialogue and, and just engagement around how do we best make sure that we're providing them in a way that, that you can actually take advantage of? Because this is purely for each one of us uh, to improve our well being, to, to grow as people. And, but it's, they're honestly not going to hit the mark if we don't have the ability to engage with them. So uh, that's what I want to know. It's on my heart a lot of, just want to make sure we hit the mark and and do it in a way that each one of you can participate in because they're they're for us again it's the awesome thing that we're doing and want to make sure we have the chance to use them thanks john so the we all know that blue zones um the research that originally led to the original blue zone identifications found that there were some things in common amongst those who are living the happiest and healthiest lives. They call it the power nine, right? Nine principles. And Shelly, do you have a favorite blue zone principle from that power nine? That is tough. Luckily, I knew you might ask me that question, Joyce. So I did think ahead. Um, the, the power nine principles, I'm not sure if everybody knows, it's actually subdivided into four categories. So there's principles that focus on healthy, natural physical movement, connection and belonging, eating wisely, and right outlook, which includes purpose and downshifting. And I think the right outlook category is my favorite. So having that consistent pattern of downshifting on the weekends, you know, honoring that Sabbath, and even downshifting at the end of a work day, having practices in the morning around prayer, gratitude, whatever that means for you, um, that works for you, having those consistent practices, and then purpose. Some experts say that the most important well-being power nine principle is purpose, having a reason to get up in the morning, finding meaning in your work. So that has to be my favorite category. I love that. John, same question. What's your favorite of the Power Nine? Oh, yes. So Shelly, man, took, took a couple of them there very well. My favorite is family first. Um, man, I just think about how much the people closest to us mean to us. And, and the fact that it's almost impossible for any one of us to be well without the ones we care about the most being well. If, if you're like me, 
I mean, it's it's a back and forth. It's part of a, a, a whole picture, us and our family. So to me, that's the most important one in my in my mind, the one that I love the most and the one that I uh, gets me up in the morning and thinking about how can I extend everything we're doing to my family and, and make sure we're all engaged together. John, those of us who know you well are not surprised that that's your favorite. We know that you adore your family, and I respect that so much about you. Um, so thank you to both of you for joining me today. Who knows, maybe we'll have an opportunity to film again in the future. That would be my privilege. Yes, that was my Same favorite here. other duty as assigned ever. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for being here. Take care. Thanks, Joyce. Thanks, Joyce. So our last story today is about a coach who's bringing hope. It's a program that is changing lives in California. And one person who has been there from the beginning, Marianne Gould, started a new career two and a half years ago at Adventist Health as a substance use navigator. And now she oversees the California Bridge Program at Adventist Health's hospitals in Mendocino County. It's a unique approach to caring for people who are challenged with substance use and need hope for renewed health and wholeness. I encourage you to read more about this inspiring work and the heart behind it at adventisthealth.org forward slash story. There you'll find many stories of health, wholeness, and hope. And I hope this blesses you as you see how Adventist Health is living God's love. Friends, thank you for connecting live. We'll see you here next week at the same day and time. And until then, let's be a force for good.